Hey guys, what's going on? Rodolfo here. So I've been updating my setup uh, little by little and today we're swapping this Samsung 28 inch 4K monitor that I've been using for about four or five years for something a little bigger. This is a 49 super wide by Philips. The model is 499P9H. So we're gonna unbox it, do a full review, do a lot of tests on it. And most of the videos that I've seen on YouTube about this monitor had it hooked up to a Windows machine. And we're gonna do some tests on it on an M1 Mac and see how it performs with a Mac. What is the compatibility with a Mac? But hey, if you're new around here, my name is Rodolfo. In this channel, we talk about iOS development, tech in general, productivity, and everything in between. So if that's something that you're into, please leave a like, helps the channel a lot, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can get the next videos when I post them. And with that said, let's unbox this and see how it works. Almost afraid it wasn't gonna fit on the table. Cables. Screws, manuals, more cables. This is the stand, which is absolutely massive. Massive extremely heavy, extremely sturdy stand, it seems. That probably not did look very good on video. So here we have the display and I'm gonna try to attach the stand and screw it in so that I can get it out with the stand already. So as you can see here for the specs, it's a 49 inch super wide 32 by 9 aspect ratio, as it has USB-C docking, it has a KVM switch if you want to hook up different computers to it and share the same keyboard and mouse. It has built-in speakers which we're gonna test in a second and display HDR 400 which is very basic, HDR I'm not expecting great gaming HDR on this. It's not a gaming monitor, it's more of a productivity one. So I'm gonna hook everything up and we're gonna see how it works. So I finished setting up everything. I still need to do some uh, cable management and hook up the hard drives and things like that to the monitor to test the web USB-C docking. I'm gonna be doing that in the next few days and hopefully in the end of the video you're gonna see the whole setup, how it looks. But let's turn everything on and take a first look at how everything looks. The display really is massive and I'm very happy to report that we are getting the full resolution on this. So as you can see here, it's 512 by 1440 at 70 hertz. I had seen a lot of videos talking about M1 Max not being able to provide the full resolution for widescreen monitors, especially those that are 512, 520 by something. And it seems like they fixed that. Um, I'm getting all this out of the box. I didn't have to do anything. Now, when it comes to being a developer, one of the things that I wanted from such a huge monitor was to be able to put Xcode, a SwiftUI preview, and the simulator like all at once on screen and being able to go from one to another without um, having to minimize screens and things like that. So let's see how that works. 
So this is a simple project from a course that I was taking. Now, as you can see from this, you can get all of that in the screen and you still have like a bunch of space left for um, maybe making this bigger or adding a web page here to the side to search something on Google or watch a tutorial while you're doing the work that you're doing. So as a developer, this is what I wanted from this. And I have really bad eyesight, so I use the Xcode editor with the presentation format, so it makes the text bigger and everything. One of the things that I was worried about this monitor is coming from a 4K monitor where everything is very sharp. Um, I was afraid that this might look a bit low resolution, but as far as I can see, like from this very early look, everything looks amazing, everything looks very sharp. When it comes to video editing, like the amount of space that you have for a Final Cut timeline is incredible. Um, I could make it look like this, but I think this is overkill. Um, like it, it is amazing to be able to see the timeline so big, but what I think I'll actually do is have it a little smaller and have something else on the screen. So when it comes to space, this is absolutely amazing. You really do feel like you have two monitors without having a border in the middle here, which for video editing, for example, would be a problem because you would have the monitor borders right where the timeline is and it cuts off the timeline and you don't really have the same kind of space that you do with this. Now if you use your monitor as your dorm room TV or anything like that, um, this is probably not the monitor for you. When it comes to watching videos, there's not a lot of content that is created for 32 by 9. So if you put this, for example, in full screen, you're gonna get um, black bars on either side. It's still a decent size for you to watch a YouTube video or something like that, but, but the video won't fill the full length of the monitor. And as I said, this monitor has speakers built in, everyone this is my new shang chi trailer video and easter eggs marvel just released even more new footage so, we'll so it's good enough for you to use and to see videos and everything but if you want a fuller uh, sound for music and stuff you're probably gonna want to go with different speakers let's do a test for music so if we go to apple music and pick something like codeplay So again, it's not terrible, but it's not the best experience that you're gonna have from speakers. And this is uh, at full sound. Something else that this monitor has is a pop-up webcam over here. So you just push it down, it comes up, and you have a webcam for video conferencing and stuff. Let's test how it looks. So this is what the webcam looks like and sounds like. It has a built-in microphone on it. And unlike the rest of the video, I've done no processing to improve the image or the sound. So this is what you get straight out of the camera. And this is in like great light condition. I have a bunch of ceiling lights over here, plus the monitor itself that's kind of lighting me and the ring light. So this is what it looks like in great lighting condition. And to be honest, it doesn't look good. Like it's still noisy and grainy. So this is not a camera that you would want to use for streaming or to record a podcast interview. But if you're just using for work Zoom calls, then who cares? It's good enough for that. When it comes to the stand, it has a few nice features like you can adjust height, it swivels, And you can also adjust the angle a lot. The only thing it doesn't do is rotate for obvious reasons. Also, when it comes to the stand, it's very sturdy, but you can make it wobble a little bit, which is expected for a panel this size, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall off or anything like that. 
and in normal use it shouldn't wobble too much like this is a standing desk I've raised and uh, lowered the desk already a few times and I don't see any wobbling while doing that so I don't think that's going to be an issue the panel is VA and it seems like a very good VA the viewing angles are pretty decent for a VA panel, but even with the curvature, you do see a little bit of a difference in colors um, at the corners, but you do get great contrast, which is what VA panels are known for. And I didn't try to game on it, but when it comes to HDR videos, I didn't see a whole lot of difference between the HDR 400 on or off. The image looks very good, but um, I didn't see the setting making a whole lot of difference. So if you want a great HDR experience, if that's what you're looking for, this is not the monitor for you. You probably want something with a Visa 1000 certification. So I'm editing the video that you have been watching so far and I've only got around to doing so a few months after the recording that you have seen up to now. So I thought it would be a good idea to record an updated impression of this monitor after living with it for a few months. So the first thing I have to say is that this is not a good monitor if you have bad eyesight, which is my case. I am still going to get new glasses soon, but I don't know how much that's going to improve. I haven't been able to use it at the full 5120 by 1440 resolution. I've actually had to bring it down all the way to 2560 to 720 so that text and icons and things like that would be big enough for me to see them comfortably but even then like here and there if I need to look at the edges I'm still using the zoom accessibility feature that macOS has and I didn't have to do that with my old 4k monitor it was a lot sharper so I went into this thinking that I was gonna have like the equivalent to two monitors side by side two 27 inch monitors side by side and at the end of the day I'm not really using it at its full potential it's probably better I have more space than I used to have with my old 4k monitor but I would not recommend this to anyone that has bad eyesight like me I'm still waiting to get those new glasses and see how it's going to be but I do think that I will end up selling this monitor and uh, getting something else that just makes things sharper and bigger at their native resolutions. With regards to the webcam, I've been using all the time for Zoom calls and things like that at work. So as you saw, it doesn't look great. I don't have the problem of the microphone not sounding great because of the AirPods, but yeah, for Zoom calls, it's fine. And the USB-C docking thing on it uh, is really great. Um, it does deliver like power for both this light and that ring light that you see over there. Uh, it's all being powered by the monitor. I have a hard drive attached to it that I can access on my computer and that works great as well. The only limitation that I found with it was that my Samsung T5 portable SSD just doesn't work with it. Like if you plug it in through the monitor, it doesn't even mount. So I don't know if this is just a problem with the T5. I don't have another portable SSD to test, but this is just something that you should be mindful that maybe it's all SSDs or maybe it's just a few brands of SSD that you're not gonna be able to plug in through the USB-C docking. So overall, there's a lot that I really like about this monitor, which is probably one of the reasons why it took me a long time to realize that it might not be the best fit for me. And once I realized that the return policy to return it was long gone and I'm now torn between keeping it or selling it because of the whole bad eyesight issue. So yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. If you do have 2020 vision, this might be a good option for you if you're looking for a monitor that is an ultra wide, that's work and productivity focused and not gaming focused. But if you do have bad eyesight like me, let this be a warning. This may not be the best option for you. So what do you guys think? Do you have a monitor like this? Are you thinking about getting a monitor like this? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions that I can answer in the comments for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help the video to be recommended to other people and it helps the 
the channel in general. Subscribe if you want to get more content like this. Hit the notification bell to get notified when I post new videos. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.